Hello everyone, here we are. We're gonna get going. We're gonna do Psalm 114. So here we go, and this one's really short with no title. When Israel came out of Egypt, Jacob, from a people of foreign tongue, Judah became God's sanctuary, Israel his dominion. The sea looked and fled. The Jordan turned back, the mountains leaped like rams, the hills like lambs. Why was it, sea, that you fled? Addressing the ocean. Why, Jordan, did you turn back? The Jordan is the Jordan River. Why, mountains, did you leap like rams? You hills like lambs. Tremble, earth, at the presence of the Lord, at the presence of the God of Jacob, who turned the rock into a pool, the hard rock into springs of water. And boy, uh, we do tremble at the presence of the God of Jacob because that lightning storm, I didn't even catch it the way it really was with my camera. I mean, I came in late because I was glued to the window. At the beginning, it was just streaks of lightning. I felt like I was watching a, a, a battle in the heavens. It was crazy. All right, Psalm 115. <clears throat> not to us, Lord, not to us, but to your name be the glory because of your love and faithfulness. Why do the nations say, where is their God? Our God is in heaven. He does whatever pleases him, but their idols are silver and gold made by human hands. They have mouths, but cannot speak. Eyes, but cannot see. They have ears, but cannot hear. Noses, but cannot smell. They have hands, but cannot feel. Feet, but cannot walk nor can they utter a sound with their throats. Those who make them will be like them, and so will all who trust in them. All you Israelites, trust in the Lord. He is their help and shield. House of Aaron, trust in the Lord. He is their help and shield. You who fear him, trust in the Lord. He is their help and shield. The Lord remembers us and will bless us. He will bless his people, Israel. And that's you and me, guys. He will bless the house of Aaron. He will bless those who fear the Lord, small and great alike. Those are promises, you guys. Those are promises for us. May the Lord cause you to flourish, both you and your children. May you be blessed by the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. The highest heavens belong to the Lord, but the earth he's given to mankind. It's not the dead who praise the Lord, those who go down to the place of silence. It's we who extol the Lord, both now and forevermore. So what I'm getting out of that is let's praise him while we're living. Okay, don't waste your time here. Don't get there and then say, oops, I forgot to praise. Make sure you're putting in some praise time. And remember, praise can just be as simple as I love you, Lord. That's praise. Thank you, Lord. That's praise. Um, Psalm 116. I love the Lord, for he heard my voice. He heard my cry for mercy. Because he turned his ear to me, I'll call on him as long as I live. The cords of death entangled me. The anguish of the grave came over me. I was overcome by distress and sorrow. Then I called on the name of the Lord. Lord, save me. The Lord is gracious and righteous. Our God is full of compassion. The Lord protects the unwary. Oh my goodness, that gives me comfort. That means all these people out there who are taking that shot, if they believe in Jesus, the Lord is gonna protect them even if they were unawares. The Lord is going to protect them. The, the, evil, the evil have not run their agenda on us yet, okay? They're trying to set it up, but I personally do not believe the shot is the mark of the beast. It may be a preamble, but God knows how to take care of his own, so I don't want you to worry about a thing, okay? God will make sure that he's got your mind. This is why it's important to study the scripture, to read it, to listen, 
to ingest it, to eat it. The reason it's important is because it will go into you and it will grow roots. And then your mind will be in remembrance of these scriptures that we're looking at, okay? And that's the kind of thought that's gonna be in your mind. When that kind of thought is in your mind, evil cannot take you over. I don't care what they try to do to you. I don't care if they put a radio transmitter in your head and they want to tell you, you go do this, you go, whatever their weird plan is, it won't work if you're a child of God. It won't work, okay? Because your mind is going to be covered in the word. It's sold out to Jesus. You've got these words flowing in you and growing. And the voice of the evil one will have no quarter in your brain, okay? So I don't want you to worry about a thing. You just stay very close to the Lord and to his word because he is the word. He is the word. What does it say in the very beginning? In the word was God. We'll have to look that up in a second. The Lord protects the unwary. When I was brought low, he saved me. So if you're unaware of the evil agenda, God, you know, even when you believe a lie, the Lord is going to look out for you if you're one of his. Okay? And I heard that preached 40 years ago. Even when I believed a lie, the Lord saved me. Okay? I've never forgotten that. Return to your rest, my soul, for the Lord has been good to you. For you, Lord, have delivered me from death, my eyes from tears, my feet from stumbling, that I may walk before the Lord in the land of the living. Now, just because I tell you to not be afraid doesn't mean I'm condoning going out and getting the shot, okay? I don't believe in the type of shot that they're giving. So if you ask me, I'm going to say, no, please don't take it because... It's a it's ninety nine point eight percent survivable. You don't need to to play with things. Now that we know more about the shot, we understand what it's what it's doing. Okay, but with that said, and you don't have to listen to me. I would hope that you would, because I can't stand to see people um, going and taking this thing, because it's it's uh, it's not right. Not what you're doing, but the shot is not right. But once again. Whether you've taken it or not, if you're one of God's, he's got you, okay? I do not think it's the mark of the beast, all right? This is just my opinion, all right? Based on what I know and what I know now, I would counsel people to not go and get a vaccine for something that's 99.8% survivable. And that's all I'm going to say about that, okay? That's all I would say about it to someone who asked me. And that's all I'm going to say about that, okay? But I've learned and I've put on Facebook the things that I have found in the last couple of days. And this is why I'm saying I don't think you need to vaccinate yourself against something you can survive. We don't know what the truth is at this point because of so many lies that are out there. And once you get, you catch the mainstream news or any news in enough, you know, even one lie, you've got, you have to be careful, Okay. But I love this. The Lord will take care of the unwary. Okay? So I don't want you to worry. I want you to pray to your God, who is my God too. And I want you to let him direct your paths. Okay? But I also want you to know what you're doing. Okay? Please know what you're doing. Do your own research. Okay? All right. I trusted in the Lord when I said I'm greatly afflicted. In my alarm, I said, everyone is a liar. Man, the Lord's right in lockstep with me, isn't he? There are lots of liars out there these days, guys. And the reason you have leaders that are blaring their horns at you, you know, people in the Lord, is because we're trying to tell you something, okay? Um, I'm not trying to set myself up as an authority on the vaccine, but I have found out some things that I've put up on my site, and I just, I can't agree with it, okay? So if you don't understand what I'm saying, I'm asking you to research it, okay? That's all. 
But most of all, just keep coming back and let's keep eating this word together, okay? Because the word is what's going to cover us and protect us. And then no matter what the enemy does, like I said, I don't care if he puts a radio transceiver or tran transponder or whatever in your brain. The enemy's words will have no effect when your mind and soul and spirit are filled with the word of God. And the more you're listening to this, the more that's happening to you, whether you know it or not, okay? So this is a good, a good thing. All right, here we go. What shall I return to the Lord for all his goodness to me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all of his people. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his faithful servants. Let's read that again. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his faithful servants. Because you're going home to him and he can't wait to see you face to face. It's not in vain, okay? Truly, I am your servant, Lord. I serve you just as my mother did. You freed me from my chains. My God, if you remember one thing, remember that. You've freed me from my chains. I will sacrifice a thank offering to you and call on the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people, in the courts of the house of the Lord, in your midst, Jerusalem. Praise the Lord. That was a good one. Now this one is only two verses long, Psalm 117. Praise the Lord, all you nations. Extol him, all you peoples. For great is his love towards us and, his, and the faithfulness of the Lord endures forever. Praise the Lord. So you can read something like this and that's your praise. Just read a couple Psalms and dedicate them to the Lord. Speak them to your God. All right, Psalm 118 and the last one for the night. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His love endures forever. We're getting a strong message here that his love is enduring forever, right? It's never gonna fail you, people. It's never gonna fail you, even if you are unwary. You know, there's a great power in remaining innocent. Sometimes curiosity kills the cat, okay? But that doesn't mean that we aren't to search or that we can't look or hunt or delve, okay? Whatever is called, whatever your calling is to do, do it, okay? But you know, the innocence of a child can rebuke Satan. The Lord is your shepherd and he is watching over you. Okay, I encourage you to find out the truth of what's going on to the best of your ability. But the Lord has got you and I want you to know that. Okay, I want you to trust the Lord. He will never, ever let you be snatched out of his hand if you are his child. If you've been born again, he's not ever going to suffer the enemy to steal you from him. There's nothing the enemy can do, okay? So let's rest in that. Let's be strong in that, okay? Let Israel say his love endures forever. Let the house of Aaron say his love endures forever. Let those who fear the Lord say his love endures forever. When hard pressed, I cried to the Lord. He brought me into a spacious place. The Lord is with me. I will not be afraid. You know, there's uh, some of you have heard of Dietrich Bonhoeffer. He worked in Harlem at one point. He was a German gentleman and he was Christian and he went into Harlem in New York and he taught and very poor people, poor, poor children. And Hitler caught him when he came back to Germany because he was very against Hitler. And Hitler, I think I may have told you this before, but you're going to have to bear with me. I'm going to remind you of it again. He kept Dietrich Bonhoeffer in a prison, I think, for a couple of years. And then one morning at the break of dawn, he paraded him naked on a very, very freezing cold day 
out into the yard while Hitler was in the warm barracks watching this on a TV monitor, and they hung him with a wire. They hung Dietrich with a wire around his neck naked at the break of dawn. But this is one thing that Dietrich Bonhoeffer said. He said, when it all comes down to it, there is nothing, absolutely nothing in this world to be afraid of. That's faith in God. I want you to think about that. I want you to think about that he could say that. There's nothing here to be afraid of. The devil is really good at, you know, trying to scare everybody. Ooga booga. You are safe in Jesus. Okay, now what's safety? Remember, safety is the saving of your soul. Your body, no matter what happens to it, is going to get, you know, redone and given back to you. And it's going to be perfected and glorified. Okay, so that's a non-issue. I know none of us want to go through any kind of pain. Gotcha. God knows. But beyond that, you are safe if you're one of his, okay? The Lord is with me. I will not be afraid. Verse 6. What can mere mortals do to me? Once again, the Lord's backing me up here. The Lord is with me. He's my helper. I look in triumph on my enemies. You ever heard that thing? You can't kill a Christian. You can only change his address. It's better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in humans. It's better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in princes. So don't look to the powerful. All the nations surrounded me, but in the name of the Lord, I cut them down. How many times have people run to the powerful and thought they were going to be safe and ended up being killed anyway? All the nations surrounded me, but in the name of the Lord, I cut them down. They surrounded me on every side, but in the name of the Lord, I cut them down. They swarmed around me like bees, but they were consumed as quickly as burning thorns. In the name of the Lord, I cut them down. I was pushed back and about to fall, but the Lord helped me. The Lord is my strength and my defense. He has become my salvation. Shouts of joy and victory resound in the tents of the righteous. The Lord's right hand has done mighty things. The Lord's right hand is lifted high. The Lord's right hand has done mighty things. I will not die but live. And will proclaim what the Lord has done. In other words, if you're living and you've got breath in your nostrils, start talking. Where at, at, at every open door, start telling. You don't try to kick in a door that's shut. But when you see an open door, and I guarantee you there's an open door in your life somewhere for you to tell of what the Lord's done for you. Just look. One time Pastor Hal said to me, stop banging on the doors that are shut and walk through the doors that are open. And I said, there aren't any doors open. He said, yes, there are. I looked around, there were three. You have to look, you have to think. The Lord has chastened me severely, but he's not given me over to death. There's a promise. Open for me the gates of the righteous. I'll enter and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord through which the righteous may enter. I will give you thanks for you answered me. You have become my salvation. The stone the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. That's a prophecy of Jesus Christ. Jesus suffered outside the gates. He was crucified outside the gates of the city on Golgotha. He was rejected. The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. The cornerstone is the thing that holds the whole building up. The Lord has done this, and it's marvelous in our eyes. The Lord has done it this very day. Let us rejoice today and be glad. Lord, save us. Lord, grant us success. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. From the house of God, we bless you. The Lord is God, and he's made his light shine on us. With boughs in hand, boughs, B-O-U-G-H-S, like boughs of a tree, or maybe palm boughs. With boughs in hand, join in the festal procession up to the horns of the altar. 
You are my God and I will praise you. You are my God and I will exalt you. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His love endures forever. Can you believe it keeps saying that? His love endures forever. That's been all through these Psalms. I'll see you tomorrow for Psalm 119. Almost done with the fifth book of Psalms. I love you very much. You have a wonderful evening. Pray for me. I'm praying for you. Love you. Bye-bye.